Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I wanna save you some time and some frustration in dealing with your smart home products that utilize Wi-Fi and or Zigbee. And when you have those two products in your home, you can run into interference because they operate both on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Now this is probably one of the most complex topics that I've tried to talk about here. And when I save you, say save you time and frustration, some of these things take a lot of schooling and a lot of reading and a lot of uh, time basically to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to try and cut to the chase as soon as I can. I'm going to do it through a couple of pictures. Now, if you don't already know what Zigbee is, it's a smart home standard that allows you to communicate separate from a wire wireless or a Wi-Fi, sorry, signal in your home. So you already have your in-home Wi-Fi, but there are Zigbee be products and the Philips Hue right here is a great example so is this Samsung smart things these are products that utilize Zigbee now both the Amazon Echo show and the Amazon Echo plus I have here they both have what's called a Zigbee hub on them so these allow you to directly communicate with Zigbee products if you'd like and then create automation in your home on the flip side, I mean, everything else we have, our laptops, our computers, our iPads, our different tablets and phones, the Google Home Hub here, the Google Home Mini, and the rest of the functions on the Amazon Echo products all operate on Wi-Fi. So both of those are oftentimes at 2.4 gigahertz. The Wi-Fi is at 2.4 and the Zigbee products are all running at 2.4 gigahertz as well. What this means is you can create interference. What that interference does to you as a homeowner, well suddenly you'll have either your Wi-Fi product drop out, but more likely you will have a Zigbee product not work as intended. You'll have some interference and suddenly some piece of automation will not be working. So what I wanna do is give you some of the basics here about what these signals look like and, and just give you some visuals and then give you some of the different things that you can do to work through these problems. So I'm just gonna bring up I, my first visual here and this is what we normally think about when we say something's operating at 2.4 gigahertz. This is the picture I think everybody thinks about or generally the picture. Now that rounded circle is intended to depict the way the signal kind of fades out as it gets further out from 2.4 gigahertz. So now that 2.4 gigahertz that we talk about is actually what's called the carrier frequency. So it's how many times the wave basically oscillates full circle. So it goes from zero all the way up and then all the way back down and all the way back up to zero again. When it does that, that is one time. Now when we say 2.4 gigahertz, it's doing that 2.4 times 10 to the nine times per second. So that's a big number and I didn't wanna try and convert that. So what we're saying is, as a signal is transmitted, it's moving obviously very quickly in terms of a wave, but also within that wave are encoded ones and zeros that cause a little bit of bumpiness on that signal. Now, again, this, this first picture that I was showing you, this is just intended to show you signal strength at a certain frequency. So that certain frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, that's what people normally think. So let me bring up the next picture and show you a little more of reality here, what's going on. Now, I'm talking about Wi-Fi here when I say channel one on this picture. So there are a number of channels that you will find on any router that is worth anything. You can go ahead and you can change the channel that your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal is being broadcasted on. You will see this, sometimes it's set to auto, but you can also set the channel usually from one to 11. Now, this first channel is actually at 
2,412 megahertz. So it's not actually at directly at 2.4 gigahertz. It's at 2.412 gigahertz. As you add the channels to the picture here, you will start to see that every five megahertz, you move and you have another channel. Now, unfortunately, this creates some overlap because in general at 2.4, uh, gigahertz here you have a 20 megahertz bandwidth or a 20 megahertz channel distance so that's what that that arc or that ellipse there is actually showing you is a 20 megahertz distance for that channel to actually broadcast over so you have overlap so if you're using channel one and your neighbor is using channel two, then you will have some overlap of those signals and some interference that gets created from that. Now, as you go ahead and you add in all of the different channels, you can start to see how much overlap you will actually have. And this means that we need to really think about where we're sticking any other 2.4 gigahertz signals. We need to really think about what carrier frequency we're actually using and therefore what channel we're using. So again, if your neighbor is using something that is within that kind of that 20 megahertz bandwidth, then you will have some interference or you're likely to have some interference and then you will have dropout. Now, most people know about about this, but what I'm going to do is start adding in the picture of Zigbee here. Now here's essentially a split screen. So over on the left, we have Wi-Fi signal and I'm just showing channel one here in a 20 megahertz bandwidth showing up there. Now that can be a little bit different. I wanna be honest about that, that 20 megahertz there, there's also a 40 megahertz setting that I would say never use on your router unless you really, really have to, but you can utilize that. And that 20 megahertz is not a hard and fast rule. It can actually branch out a little differently, which I'll show you a great example of from another website here in a few moments. But on the other side, you can see two Zigbee channels. Now, they are separated again by five megahertz, but the difference here is that their bandwidth or their width of their signal is constrained to about four megahertz. Now it's two megahertz on either side and this ends up leaving you about one megahertz between channels on the Zigbee side. So you can see how Zigbee channels are not intended to interfere with each other at all. They're intended to be very, very specifically uh, slotted in their space. The other thing that you'll notice is that I'm calling it channel 11. That's actually the first channel in the Zigbee uh, standard here. It goes from 11 to 26, but in general, what you'll find is the 26th channel, most Zigbee devices don't support. And to be honest, I don't know why that is. I don't know what's going on there, but it, it doesn't work. And so you can't use that 26th channel. But every five megahertz from the 2405 megahertz or the 2.405 gigahertz, you will have a channel up to 26. Now, as I overlay these two standards, you will see that for channel one and on a Wi-Fi signal here or a Wi-Fi system, you will see that that directly overlaps to the Zigbee, uh, the 11 and 12th, and actually a few more channels as we move along. The 13th channel will obviously be right in that signal from the Wi-Fi side of things. Now, what I will tell you as well here on this picture is that I'm not showing the actual uh, power or actual signal strength, you will find in general that Wi-Fi is extremely low power, whereas the signals for Zigbee are a little bit higher power actually, or, or a lot in a lot of cases. Now, we call both of these networks very low power. That's okay. You don't need to worry about that. But in the end, what happens if these two signals are overlapping and they are canceling each other out or 
adding to each other, you get signal interference. So essentially when that Wi-Fi bandwidth goes over top of Zigbee, you will lose connection to Zigbee devices. So you really wanna make sure that doesn't happen. Now I'm going to show you a couple of depictions here from another website that I think really does a good job of showing this. And I, I couldn't recreate something as good as these guys did. Now they're actually showing the Wi-Fi channels 1, 6, and 11 here on this first uh, graph or this first depiction. Now, the reason they're doing that is that's oftentimes what they utilize, but it is a really good example for us to go ahead and build off of here. Now, the 1, 6, and 11, they all have their different frequencies, and they're also showing the signals more as a top hat because there is... Uh, basically a difference of how that bandwidth, I showed you the little uh, ellipse or semicircle there. This is a more accurate depiction of the signal strength on a channel. It kind of falls off over time after it gets outside a certain bandwidth. Now that little piece that falls off over time can still interfere with Zigbee networks. So we want to in general try and stay outside of even that. but. I will say that it's not as big of an issue for you if you're in that. It's it's not a perfect situation, but if your Zigbee channel is within kind of the lower end of that channel, that Wi-Fi channel, then you're probably going to be okay. Now here's the big depiction that I think was really, really useful. This is showing the overlay of the Zigbee signals or the Zigbee channels over top of these three Wi-Fi channels. And I think this is so powerful powerful for you as a home owner or a home user with Zigbee and Wi-Fi in your home, I think this is so powerful for you to have in your arsenal. So save this. There's a link below to this article as well that you can go and grab that picture so that you can visually see this and set up your system correctly. So this picture here that I'm showing you, this is a really good depiction of what I'm doing as I've said. And channel one and six are totally available if you utilize channel 24 for your Zigbee signal. Now, obviously in busier places, this could be a problem and we'll get to that in a second here, but this is where you can really go and start to implement some things. So number one, you wanna find out for any hub that you're buying what the Zigbee channel is that they're going to use. Then, once you know that, and I'll tell you for Samsung SmartThings, they're using exactly what is being shown here. They're using channel 24, and you cannot change it. They don't give you an option to change it. That's actually a little problem, as far as I'm concerned, with the Samsung SmartThings hub. So you wanna make sure that your Zigbee hub can actually adjust channel so that you can go ahead and play with it. Now, in the case of Samsung and in, in the case of most homes, I think you'll find 24 is a pretty good choice as long as you're choosing and you can see here they're depicting channels one and six or any of the channels in there you could utilize for your Wi-Fi system. Set those channels to between one and six and utilize that for your Wi-Fi and you will keep those signals apart and really minimize, if not completely, eliminate any interference between you and your Wi-Fi and your Zigbee networks. Now here's where it gets interesting because in the more populated areas, obviously your neighbor is going to be using something as well. And you wanna limit that interference, obviously, as much as you can, but sometimes this is not going to be possible just because either your neighbors don't know what you're talking about or they don't really care to work with you or they have a router that they can't do anything with or they have a Zigbee system as well or even a Z-Wave system. This could be a problem on a Z-Wave system as well. Now, what I'll tell you is that in general, that side lobe is what it's called. That side lobe is an okay zone for you guys to share as neighbors because again, that signal strength is going to fall over time as it gets further and further away from the router and away from the devices that are transmitting and receiving. So. 
in general, that side lobe I think is gonna be okay in most situations. Obviously in a very close apartment, you may run into a few things here, or a few issues here that you just cannot get around. But in general, you should be able to set yourselves apart in say channel one, channel six, and then utilize your Zigbee network, which again, very, very short or very, very small bandwidth. So if you do have the option to move your channels just that little bit, then you can keep everything separate. And in most cases, you're not going to run into a lot of interference. One of the other big techniques is obviously, when you have a Zigbee device next to a Wi-Fi device, number one, a little separation helps. So, you know, we don't need everybody kissing and hugging and, and making out here. Let's just separate them a little bit. And that can help a lot. The other thing that you can do is, you know, this is an Amazon Echo Plus with both a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz radio on board. So that means I can move this to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and stop this interference discussion. And this is what I'll say, in general, Wi-Fi is moving in this direction. We're going to eliminate a lot of these B, G, and N wireless uh, devices over time. And I would, I would say that's probably a great suggestion for you if your router doesn't already have five gigahertz capability might be time to start looking at them and then start to move lots of your devices over. Now what I'll tell you about those five gigahertz routers and the five gigahertz signal as, in general, it, uh, it does not go as far as your 2.4. So where you have one router that maybe covers your home right now, you might need two and for larger homes, you might be into three or something and, and really looking at these mesh network capabilities. Now, some of the research I've read, and I wanna tell you about this because I think, you know, this could sound very frightening. And I think a lot of people, you know, they have this opinion that, well, Wi-Fi and Zigbee are really, it's too crowded. There's really gonna be a lot of problems. But I actually saw some great research from Microsoft that worked through some mitigation methods as well as explain how much interference it kind of took before there were a lot of collisions and a lot of interference and they actually did this at a conference where they tested how many devices would actually go out of communication as people were walking around with their cell phones essentially and connecting to Wi-Fi networks and utilizing their their products and moving around they actually showed some great graphs now again they had some mitigation techniques they had some things that they could do and there is research out there that is not yet implemented in any systems but it is possible to do some very simple things with both Zigbee and Wi-Fi communications as well in the future that will remove this issue. But they were talking about literally thousands of devices and thousands of uh, people around with their, with their cell phones, with their Wi-Fi devices getting in the way of these signals before they actually saw a lot of degradation. So guys, I think I've kind of hit the middle ground here. I didn't want to get too technical and take you back to my computer engineering school days where, well, to be honest, most of the time I was asleep. But you know, there were days where the content would just lose me even in that school. And so I'm trying not to lose anyone here. But for those of you that are looking for some more detailed information, a little more detailed help, obviously you can leave comments down below. I try to get to those. I try to answer as many as I can. But on top of that, I have a Patreon page where I work with some people. You know, they ask me questions. I will answer those questions to the best of my abilities for their specific situation. People have different challenges in their homes and in their businesses as well. So I'm happy to help. And there on Patreon, I'm able to spend a little more time because there is a low, it's a very low monthly fee that you can come in and you can join up, join our community and start working with some very bright individuals as well. Not just me. These are people who really understand home automation and this technology in general. So thanks again for watching everyone. I hope this has really helped you 
create time, save money, and hopefully automate your life so you can go and spend that time with your friends and your family instead of spending time working on this stuff.